Donald Trump uh, tweeting on this. He says, as you confirmed, David, Mike Pompeo, director of the CIA, will become our new secretary of state. He will do a fantastic job. Thank you to Rex Tillerson for his service. Uh, Gina Haspel will become the new director of the CIA, the first woman chosen to do so. Congratulations to all, and thus the White House uh, spins. You have to wonder, though, what foreign policy, though, is most in flux on this, David? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, at the same time, when you talk about foreign policy, for some time, this is not just under President Trump, foreign policy has largely been set out of the White House. And the Secretary of State has mm -hmm. done a good job going around the world and meeting with people, uh, exercising and implementing the foreign policy set by the White House. But foreign policy hasn't really Just been set. Just ask John Kerry, right? And well, exactly. John Kerry, a long list of people, frankly. I mean, you'd have to go back you know, a, a long way at this point to Henry Kissinger uh, to, to really find a time that foreign policy was really set out, out, of the out of the Secretary of State's office. Okay, we welcome now our Chief Content Officer, Marty Schenker, knows all things Washington. As I've just been saying, but you can contradict me, this is not a huge surprise. It was widely speculated. Rex Tillerson and was not very happy. President Trump wasn't necessarily happy with him. No, that's true, but, you know, timing is always surprising. He's been in, he's been out, he's been, you know, given uh, an endorsement by Trump and then behind the scenes been criticized. So it's clear that Donald Trump wants, and he said last week, there were going to be changes mm -hmm. in his staff. He's come through at least today. Um, so this has now become the new normal, right, in this White House, that Donald Trump wants to be comfortable with the people that surround him and you know he's lost some key people who he had a high comfort level with and now he's bringing people like Mike Pompeo closer to him even though he was having daily conversations with him at the CIA now he's given him the mantle of executing his policy. So what do we know uh, really about Mike Pompeo as Secretary of State? I mean, he's been, he served in the House of Representatives, he's been a representative, then he went to be a CIA director. What in his background really informs us about what kind of Secretary of State he's going to be? Well, I, I, I don't think in some ways, just like Rex Tillerson, there's really nothing in his background that would suggest he has a great grasp of the historical sweep of foreign relations, but that doesn't seem to matter to this president. Um, he's more interested in loyalty and a, a firm embrace of his policies. What is really interesting that this comes just on the, on the heels of a direct talks with North Korea mm. with the introduction of a new Mideast peace plan and right before you you're doing that you're you're changing the the jockey on the horse and uh, my, Mike Pompeo will have a lot of catching up to do. At the same time it's an interesting question how much the president will be relying upon the State Department as opposed to the CIA in preparing for those talks with Kim Jong-un. I mean we talked to some people from the CIA we talked to a deputy director in charge of Korea uh, yesterday and he said you know what the CIA is going to play a very big role because we uh, know nothing you, about this country. That is correct and you know China is also uh, on uh, very supportive of our North Korea talks but at the same time, relations with China are extraordinarily important to this administration and on the verge of possible trade issues with China. Um, Mike Pompeo, with his background in the CIA, may find that very advantageous in dealing with the Chinese. I just want to go over the market reaction here because it's been quite interesting. Uh, if you take a look at yields, uh, you did have yields moving lower in terms of the 10 year down by three basis points. We're off the low so far of the session, but 284 is still how he prints. So it feels like there was an immediate reaction in a safe haven bid uh, in terms of treasuries. If you take a look at the dollar, uh, interesting story there as well. Uh, the dollar index, the worst performing G10 currency with the exception of the Japanese yen down against all currencies also around the lows of the session. Stocks, though, off the highs, but feels relatively immune at the same time. And I wonder, what's that in reaction to? Is this a CPI story? Is this uh, the bullish headlines coming out of the UK and Philip Hammond really pushing uh, sterling higher? Is it uh, the CPI data? Is it the change in administration? There's so much going on, it's really hard to figure out what is causation. What it's is all those correlation. things, right? But, I mean, but, but, but I feel like what we have to then think about is when we talk about political risk from the White House, the markets were set, were set to ignore it. Is this a different narrative now, or is it still going to be a buy the dip, we have an immediate reaction, and then in two seconds, no one cares? I think that this, as I said, this is the new normal. If you expect consistency and, uh, you know, a, a calm uh, policy making apparatus in the White House, you're sadly mistaken. That's not going to happen. So I want to interject here just for a moment because there is something historic that happened, which is the first woman ever has been appointed to direct the CIA. Right. Gina Hospital, who is a career uh, intelligence officer, actually, she has been the deputy director of the CIA. She's been there forever and has been involved in some um, difficult operations, I think it's fair to say, for the CIA. But that is really historic to have a woman as a director of CIA. It is, and for an administration <clears throat> that has a real... Uh, 
poor record, frankly, on appointing females to high positions. This is uh, something that Donald Trump can point to and point to proudly. And she will need to get Senate confirmation, but I suggest that that will probably be pretty easy, as will Mike Pompeo. 